Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. Today I'm gonna to do a project for myself. I have found that the more homesteading I do, the less I like the one out and, uh, well, being around people in general. But today I'm going to show you how to make a very inexpensive fuel caddy. And you can get these plastic drums for about 12 to $15 most of the time they're not more than that. If they are, you're going to the wrong place. I built this about two years ago and this one actually had gasoline in it. And gasoline's a lot hotter than diesel fuel and a lot more flammable, obviously. So that was pretty much a test to make sure this barrel would hold up to that kind of fluid or that kind of, well, gasoline. And I, I like using the uh, non-ethanol fuel in my lawn mowers and stuff like that. So the, today's project is gonna be, I'm gonna build a caddy, a fuel caddy, out of this drum, and it's gonna be for diesel fuel. And I'll show you how to roll these rings and, and, and cut the rebar and stuff. And this was built for less than, I would say, $40. Go buy one for, you know, however many hundreds of dollars, and you, I'm sure you can get them for 150 or so. And, and I just don't, I can't see myself doing that. So my nature is from where I'm at, we make what we need. And I need one for my diesel fuel because obviously I can't use gasoline in, and I need for my little tractor, I'm tired of going out to the minute mark and getting fuel. So the less I have to go off the property, the better I like it. So hold on, we'll get started here and we'll see how far we get. All right, this was, I guess, the expensive part. You can go to Northern Tool and pick this up. The guy up in Burlington was really very helpful. They had one for about 450 bucks that went in a barrel. I didn't want that, so this is a siphon pump, and he says that it not only gets great ratings, my neighbor has one, if I'm not mistaken, identical, and it is pretty much just a handheld. You pick that up and, and Put it where you need it and you drop the siphon into which barrel with the screen on it and there's the pump now this pump does not have an automatic cutoff but guess what i don't want an automatic cutoff i don't walk away from it when i'm using it and it clips to a 12 volt battery and i have a small solar panel that i keep my 12 volt batteries charged up with so let's get on with this All right, so you saw me cut the rebar for the vertical. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna drop this down a little bit. I'm gonna drill these holes first. Now, as you notice, I am not using a vise to hold this in. I'm just using vise grips. And the reason being is I've used this drill press quite a lot. And I know about when it's going through. Now, that doesn't always mean it doesn't snag or jerk, but it's it's okay that I don't put the vise up here for some of these. And you can also see that I did not dimple these to find exact center. 
this particular job, it's not that important. If I were doing machining or trying to, for a customer trying to get him a piece drilled out, then yes, I would find dead center, center punch it, and even sometimes use a smaller bit first to drill these holes. But if this is off a little bit, it isn't that bad. And you also may notice I'm not putting any oil on this, cutting oil. Uh, found in the last 30 some years. This does really well and guess what? I don't care. <laughs> if it were something I was cutting through hardened steel, yeah, I'd use cut oil. This, just mild steel. Drill bit cuts through as you can see. Well, a couple of seconds and it cuts through. Now what I'm going to do is take a second here and we'll go back to the saw and see if we can't get these cut. called simple tools this is a ring roller that I made quite some years back I cranked down on the center roller with just a small little breaker bar I, it pops off and on but the bearings out of this came off of a shopping cart caster now I wouldn't recommend you go steal those but they're pretty much everywhere and you crank this down bicycle pedal for a crank Look at this. Now, this is a really smooth roller. Sometimes I actually push it through just to speed it, but I can, there's about one crank or so, and you can see it's rolling nice ring. Bring that about one more, and I think we're about there on this. I have to do two of these, one for the top and one for the bottom. But how smooth is that? Now, I don't know what somebody else would have to do to get that. Nice, smooth, round ring. And as you see, sometimes I tell you they do go past because there's no magical science to this. But this is one of those jobs that's not going to be mechanical or machine of any kind. So I can open that up and make it fit. I left a few inches on each side. Yeah, look at that. That's just, that's a really nice, hopefully that's in the camera, that's a really nice ring. And I can throw that aside and go ahead. I'll roll the other one off camera because if you obviously seen one, you've seen them, you've seen two. So hold on one second, I'll get these done and we'll put them together. All right, I'm going to show you first of all these rings. You can see they're not exact, but I'm going to pull them to the measurement I need on the table, tack them together, and cut off the remainder. Give you a little close-up of this tool. This, again, is a shopping cart caster. Yeah, there's where the wheel was, and this went up into the socket. So, this is an idler pulley. Out of, I don't know, nor do I care. And this was part of a jack that threads up and down and lifts that wheel. And the good old bicycle crank, you know what? It makes a better handle than it does for the foot. So, all right, I'm going to cut this off and we'll get back to maybe doing some welding. All right, I'm going to take just a quick second. I know by measuring the first one that I built, I need 21 inches. That is 22 to get 21, I just pull that in and check the other side. That's 21. 
So if I come right here and I mark this, and the same with this one over here. Now this one was a little bit closer, I believe. Mm, we got a problem there. It looks like we need 21. Now they were both, oh, there we go. Yeah, that'll work. That's 21 and that's 21. We go to the middle and mark where the, boy, that was close. Anyway, now I'm gonna go ahead and cut these off camera because again, no sense in boring you to tears. So hold on just a minute, I'll get them cut. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and put this one together right quick. Show you what I was looking for was right at 21 inches is what that other one was. This one looks like it is about 21 and a quarter that way. And about 21 this way. So I'm gonna kind of just pull in on that lightly and attack this. job it doesn't take a very large amount of time it's just camera setup and stuff all right now without any adjusting those two rings not too bad and they came out and like I said I needed 21 inches they came out that one is 21 and a quarter ish I say that's close enough Let's get on with putting the braces between it, the handles on it. I also have to build a bottom and I'll show you how to do that. All right, let's put some rebar sides on this. And y'all saw me cut these on the saw. And as I always say, safety and protection, personal protection. Why are you earmuffs? Why are you safety glasses? You'd be glad you did later on, I promise. Now I'm gonna weld this and again, I'm ballparking this vertical. Is it absolute perfect? We'll see, won't we? Attack that. to get this measurement, I measured the circumference with a flexible tape measure and a little clamp. Again, all the stuff I do off camera because I don't want to waste all that time in your cutting. take much they're uh, still just tacked together they came out fairly straight again I've been doing this long enough I got a pretty good eye I'm gonna show you how I get the bottom floor or the grate put on this I'll mark a couple of these and then get to the rebar cutting but all I did was found center which is 11 inches roughly so actually 10 and 3 quarters but again this is holding up a plastic tank as long as I got enough substantial material in the bottom it doesn't matter how close. So I'm just, I made lines on the table and, and look vertical and line that up right there's the first one. And that's at three and a half. This one is at seven. Yeah, there. And the same, oops, excuse me. The same over here, three and a half. And again, it looks pretty close. I'm not, 
that interested in exact or absolute perfect. And that way I save a bunch of my time and that will give me rebar. So I'll cut the rebar off camera and then show you how I put it in. All right, all I did was measure, as you saw, and got the spacing. Cut the rebar to fit, it's time to weld the floor in. get this welded up and then we'll see how the hinges go on all right check that out maybe an hour and a half total she's still a little bit toasty on the bolts where I just welded this and again to get this angle all you have to do is go back to my video where I bent half inch square bar and 3 8 3 bar and I'll show you what I do She's still hot. So, okay. Guys, check it out. There is a diesel fuel tote. Now, I'm not certifying it. Uh, federal whatever approved. I'm just saying this is what I use to carry my diesel fuel. Be safe. Like, share, comment. Jimmy Crack Corn and I don't care if you do or don't. But if you do, leave some good comments and share this video. Maybe someone else can use this. And let me know what you think, guys. Thanks, and have a great day.